And today we do, I will tell you something more fancy about uh, cryptocurrency and stable coins. And uh, these are a, a couple of papers together with my colleagues, Daniele Marazzina and uh, a PhD student of mine, Giancarlo Giuffra. And uh, the goal is uh, to, un to analyze crypto asset markets at high frequency. I will tell you in a moment what kind of information do we have. And uh, the goal is, uh, was, uh, we had several goals that we tried to understand providing, we started with the idea to provide a, a, a first because uh, there is no sound analysis of uh, crypto asset markets at high frequency. And uh, we specialize in two different uh, uh, topics. First of all, market relationship. So how the markets considering different cryptocurrency works and what are the relationship among them and uh, the, the main goal was, uh, the second goal was uh, and is to understand uh, the level of market efficiency in a cryptocurrency. Uh, when we refer to, uh, to stock market, mostly you know that um, market efficiency refers to the fact that uh, returns are not predictable. There are no arbitrage. So we tried to say something about this in the crypto, crypto markets. And uh, what we discovered, and this I think is, uh, is uh, the main contribution of, uh, of the talk, is that uh, uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, there are two different sets of markets. We consider a limited set of markets. And uh, uh, markets differ significantly depending on the type of cryptocurrency that is exchanged. If you consider cryptocurrency exchange with the dollar, something. <clears throat> if you consider cryptocurrency exchange with the uh, Tether is another story. So this is the main contribution, and I would like to tell you a few things about it. Maybe some of you already know that Tether is uh, somehow a reserve asset that you use if you want to trade the cryptocurrencies. But this leads to many different uh, results with this and time series analysis in this environment. And more or less, I will tell you that um, uh, Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, we consider a limited set of markets. We started for a large, from a large set of markets and when we restrict our attention to Bitcoin and uh, Tether and uh, Tether stablecoin, maybe you already know that Tether is, uh, plays a relevant role. And uh, I will show you some results that are not so obvious, I think, and uh, that are interesting. <coughs> so uh, what is the content of my analysis? First of all, I would like to provide you a short overview of a data set an analysis of some features of the markets. And then I will concentrate on uh, the relationship among markets and uh, on market efficiency. About the data set, first of all, we consider a, a period where Bitcoin against dollar was, uh, was yes, was varying a lot, but not, uh, not uh, was uh, uh, going up and down. So significant volatility. We start from 1st of April, 2019, to 13 of October, 2020. And uh, we use tick by tick observation. I will tell you in a moment what kind of information we had. And uh, this snapshot of, uh, of uh, posso togliere questo? Non lo posso togliere. Lo sposto. Okay. Now, uh, now you see the kind of markets that we consider we consider six markets. So we consider uh, Bitcoin and Ether exchange each other. Bitcoin and Ether exchange with the Tether. And then we consider dollar exchange both with Bitcoin and Ether and also with, uh, uh, with Tether. So these, these are the markets that we consider. And, uh, and uh, if you think about what we are talking about, we are talking about six pairs, pairs refer to a market and 22 exchange. So we consider several, uh, a large number of exchange that covers 70% 70, 70 of market according to coinmarketcap.com. So we try to have a, a large, not exhaustive representation of, uh, of the markets, but uh, we think that 70% uh, represent a good, uh, a good, uh, a good level of information. We have tick by tick, we have two different types of information. Uh, I have to say that uh, 
at the beginning, the goal of our, of our research project was to understand, uh, and then we, we 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 didn't cover, we didn't reach this, but uh, it's next to some things that uh, you do here at UCL. We wanted to understand uh, how the order book composition may affect uh, arbitrage opportunities in the market. This was the, our research question at the beginning. So we consider both tick by tick trading information and order book information. Uh, data obtained from Kaiko and CryptoTick, and uh, for each transaction, trade information includes the following items exchange, currency, date, price, and transaction of the transaction, and amount and sell, true or false, depending on the fact that uh, the trade is initiated by a buyer or a seller. And then we take a snapshot of order books at one minute frequency. Okay including all bid and all ask placed within 10% of the mid price, mid price at the time of a snapshot is taken. So the idea is uh, to have a, 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 a very high frequency description of a market development and uh, a less high frequency, I mean, one minute representation of, uh, of uh, the uh, order book. First of all, why data? This is something that uh, I maybe is, is well known for those of you who are practice a lot of crypto markets, but uh, for the others, I, I would like to, to say a few things. We started from several stable coins. Here you see USD coin, 2USD, Paxos, DAI. And uh, we discovered something that uh, was, uh, at least to us, was unknown. <clears throat> that is, these cryptocurrencies, uh, first of all, uh, Tether is the one which is more stable. So parity deviation with respect to $1, uh, the Tether is the one that uh, match the parity uh, in the best way with respect to the others. But this was not the real reason why we exclude these stable coins. The main reason to exclude the stable coins is that uh, they are not almost traded with the dollar. So pay attention to this. If you consider this stable coin, well, they are fairly traded with Bitcoin and Ether. The fraction of minutes with no trade is, uh, uh, is high for the guy, but it's quite uh, low, for example, for Pax, uh, QSD, and uh, USD coin. So they work really as, still as a reserve asset, but they are not traded almost uh, with dollar. So if you go to look at the number of minutes with no trades, for example, uh, QSD, QSD is uh, almost, uh, is traded only 4% of the minutes and so on. So we decided to exclude this. Uh, so I mean, uh, it means that people buy last 40 p.m. then keep using them without the I mean, I mean, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they, people don't, if you want, uh, Stable coin in a bit in cryptocurrency, uh, I will show to you is a market uh, where you enter exit and uh, you don't enter exit through these stable coins. So either you enter you enter the domain of cryptocurrency and stable coins and you remain there, exchanging, of course, uh, QSD with, uh, with uh, Bitcoin and so on, but you don't go out from this. So price are sample that, uh, uh, we, as we said, we have observation each second interval, okay? And uh, we compute the price as the average price of trades executed during the, the second. So we have, I think, a good representation of what happens in the market. Few things about, uh, we, I will provide you three main, uh, I would say descriptive analysis, okay? We don't have very, very insightful, very, uh, we try to investigate this market from a purely descriptive point of view. So point two, point three, and point four, I will concentrate on the following items. First of all, a high frequency analysis that I call market analysis. Second point, uh, relationship among markets. And third point, uh, market efficiency. About, uh, uh, about uh, uh, raw data. So first of all, raw data, what do we have? Well, I don't want to go through it uh, in, a, in, a, in a very, in, a, in a saying too many things. About return, uh, we know very well, I mean, this is not a, an important, an interesting result, but if you look at standard deviation, 
all kinds of Bitcoin, crypto, Bitcoin and Ether exchange with the Tether has a, 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 a lower standard deviation with respect to Bitcoin to dollar. So you see is a, is a 0 0.0049 for Bitcoin dollar. And if you look at Bitcoin Tether is a one fifth. But this is not something, this is a look at the, some, some features that you know very well, a large kurtosis, so no normality. And uh, here is a uh, is something that I think uh, is uh, the first point that I would like to to stress is about the number of chains. Uh, here you see the number of exchanges. So you can see that Bitcoin and Tether is a uh, uh, no here but we don't have a number of exchanges. Sorry. You look at uh, an important point. If you look at Bitcoin Tether, Ether, Ether Tether, Ether Bitcoin, and also Bitcoin Dollar, Ether Dollar. Almost all the minutes there is a change. Instead, if you look at uh, tether dollar, so the conversion of a stable coin with uh, one dollar, almost 50% of the minutes there is no change, so less liquidity. So markets are liquid, I would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm, and uh, uh, it is interesting, and uh, we start from this. If you look at the number of trades, but we can see similar things about the number. The trading volume, the mean of the trade each minute, okay, for Bitcoin Tether and dollar is very high, okay, compared to the amount that you have on the dollar market. Sorry. Ah, I can reach. Yeah. So sorry, sorry. So here you see we have uh, one thousand two hundred twenty-one trades on average on Bitcoin Tether. 651 on uh, Ether dollar, uh, Ether Tether. And if you look at uh, the trades, the number of trades uh, with, uh, with the dollar, we are at very, very low level. So this start to thinking about it, we, we start to think about the fact that uh, we are talking about different markets. If you look at trading volume, you have similar results. They mean, they mean the largest volume is, uh, is Bitcoin Tether. And the others are less relevant in terms of uh, volume. Here you have, we have computed what we call realized volatility. This is the volatility during a day. This is a standard way to compute volatility. And we confirm that uh, a Bitcoin dollar and Ether dollar is much more volatile with respect to Bitcoin Tether. Of course, this is quite, uh, I would say obvious in a way, but not so much, I mean, because uh, if you think about Bitcoin dollar and Bitcoin Tether, we are exchanging Bitcoin with the same, with the same asset. More, not, not the same asset, sorry. But it's still $1. So what we observe is very limited the volatility in the uh, crypto asset stablecoin domain with respect to what we observe to in uh, the domain of Bitcoin dollar. Uh, uh, I skip this, the order flow, I want only to define what is the order flow, maybe those I'm sure that uh, our colleagues know very well what we are talking about, but the order flow, uh, it's, uh, we call it senior volume, that is, I want to, to understand uh, uh, how the volume is composed considering the buyer and the seller if we initiate the trade, so order flow is positive if it is initiated by the buyer, the volume, the quantity, the trade, the quantity traded VI, or it is negative if it is initiated by the seller. So this gives to you from a, a, an economic point of view, a form of uh, liquidity pressure or market, market pressure. Okay, if uh, what you expect is that uh, if there is a positive order flow, the price goes up because there is a, a lot of demand. If uh, the order flow is negative, you expect that the price goes down because uh, people want to sell. Uh, we have some information also about the bid ask spread. We compute it as a, we take uh, the best bid and the best ask uh, at one minute frequency. And uh, we, uh, here there are some, div, some uh, raw data that I don't want to comment and uh, I will come back in a moment. Now, first thing that uh, market analysis, first thing that we want to do is uh, to understand uh, what happens considering return, volatility, volume, and so on. 
Uh, I would like to start from uh, from uh, uh, the idea was to mimic the analysis that we have in the stock exchange. If you consider the stock exchange, there are several, I would say, uh, regularity at high frequency level. First of all, you see a strong correlation between trading volume and volatility. This is something that you observe at high frequency, low frequency in all kinds of markets. Second of all, you have you see here referred to a classical paper by Chordy et al. You see a price pressure effect that is a logarithmic return is affected by the order flow, uh, order flow in the market because if you if there is a lot of initiated demand, uh, trade, then the market goes up. Other point we observe, and this has been really difficult to explain to microeconomic models, a relationship between beta spread and uh, trading volume. This is uh, something that uh, financial economists have tried to explain several times with models. It is almost impossible to, to understand, but uh, the point is that we have a liquidity when there is a, a large, a large trading volume. What we observe, and this is uh, the main, the first result showing that markets are different, is that more or less uh, markets are separated in two. Markets where crypto assets are exchanged with US dollar and the markets involving only crypto assets. And what we observe is curious. First of all, and this nice, we observe no correlation in all the markets between bid spread and market activity. So if there is a large trading activity, trading volume or number of trades, you do not observe a high bid aspect. And uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, something that is new if you want. Uh, the two markets, set of markets are separated on two issues, two points. First of all, trading volume and volatility, which is strong, that are strongly correlated in financial markets, are correlated only when uh, you consider the second set of markets. So when you consider Ether with Bitcoin, Bitcoin with uh, Tether, Ether con, uh, con Tether, you observe that the trading volume and volatility go together. Large trading volume, large volatility. No result such that is obtained when you trade the cryptocurrency with uh, the US dollar. Second interesting point, I'll come back on. You observe that uh, logarithmic return is affected by the order flow only in the second set of markets and not in the first one. Here we are referring only to correlation. Okay, here you have uh, all the correlations. So you see, you, we have uh, for the first set of market, Bitcoin dollar, Ether dollar, and uh, Tether dollar, we have uh, the correlation between uh, uh, bid ask and log return and so on, a different frequency. I think it's uh, five minutes and uh, half an hour when I don't remember, depending on the part that you consider. But this is something that uh, we observe here. You find, uh, I'm not commenting it, uh, similar results for Bitcoin Tether and Ether Tether and Ether Bitcoin. So uh, what we observe is that uh, considering relationship between trading volume and volatility and market pressure of the order flow, only uh, the second set of markets, so the markets that you exchange cryptocurrency among them, looks behave like stock markets. The others are not behaving like this. Um, so the claim, and uh, uh, I will go through this claim without the proof of it, but the claim is uh, more or less the following. Uh, Cryptocurrency are exchanged by in the, the markets where you exchange cryptocurrency with dollar are dominated by herd effect and the flow of uh, uninformed people. Arbitrage are those who trade either because they have some shock on their liquidity or those who trade for technological information, whatever. Look, we don't have in cryptocurrency the ban. So in the stock market, you have that somebody may be informed about the value of Apple. Here we don't have. So the point is that the, our guess is that, uh, and I think that uh, we are doing a guess that has not been done before, is that uh, traders who arbitrage in the market, who look for opportunities, are mostly trading inside the domain of Ether, Bitcoin, Tether, and not 
and don't go outside selling on buy dollar. I will come back to it, uh, providing you several uh, uh, proof, not proof, several, several features. So the first one was mostly the first feature that uh, take away take away one is about uh, correlation between the quantity of each single market. Okay, so trading volume, volatility, order flow, and return. Now we move to a second type of analysis, which is about uh, relationship among markets. And here we dealt with two different features. First of all, market correlation. And second of all, what uh, is called lead leg relationship. So that is, I want to understand what, what is the market who is leading that. Now, interesting, uh, what we find is that uh, uh, we found this separation among markets, okay? So we consider correlation between uh, several quantities, okay? Log return and other things. What you observe starting from it, from this is that uh, uh, Bitcoin and Ether dollar, Bitcoin and dollar and Ether dollar are strongly correlated. Okay, if you look at uh, at the uh, log return here, it is uh, not strongly, but I mean, is uh, here is zero point twenty four, and here is uh, is. Uh, uh, sorry. Week, sorry, Bitcoin and dollar and Ether dollar are weakly related to each other. And here you see the result. Here you have a 0 0.24 or 0 0.08. So if uh, Bitcoin goes up, it doesn't mean that uh, Ether goes up. It depends. Here we have in the lower triangle one hour level, in upper triangle we have five minute level information. But if you look at the same information about Ether dollar, Ether, uh, tether and Bitcoin tether, things change radically. And you observe that there is a strong correlation. We are talking about 0.77%. So oh, different behavior, again, strange. We are talking about not the same asset, but the value of the two assets is the same, $1 and tether, which can be traded in $1. Weak correlation about uh, uh, trading with the dollar and strong correlation trading with the tether. So, uh, what is uh, what do we have from this? Well, we have the centrality. We have uh, shown again, show it again that uh, tether plays a significant role about uh, to, about trading with Bitcoin and that. Here is a, a not very famous, but there is a paper, Journal of Finance, showing that. Uh, that has been used to manipulate to manipulate uh, Bitcoin. We don't find significant result on it, but we find significant result of strong correlation, at least about return. About trading volume uh, among the markets, uh, trading volume is uh, are strongly correlated. So here, Bitcoin, dollar, whatever. I mean, no, no problem. Okay. What is different is about correlation between volatilities of markets. Well, here we find a strong correlation for markets where crypto assets are exchanged against each other. Uh, and the strong correlation for volatility where crypto assets are exchanged against the dollar. And the two, the two sets of markets do not uh, interact each other. So, we may have strong volatility in a day in Bitcoin uh, dollar and uh, Ether dollar, that's fine, but there is no strong correlation between the volatility of Bitcoin dollar and uh, Bitcoin Ether. So again, we find the evidence and here you find the volatility as I told you, here you see volatility for Ether dollar is 90% against Bitcoin dollar. But if you look at uh, volatility of Bitcoin uh, uh, dollar against uh, Bitcoin Tether is 0 0.05. So almost now, okay? Again, we have a uh, five minute and one hour level information. Uh, so again, here we have that uh, the, two, the two markets move differently. And uh, similar evidence has been provided by performing lead leg relation. 
linear algorithm in relations to block site uh, a regression for uh, when you look at you would like to understand that here we see uh, the return of Bitcoin Tether, we regress it on uh, the return of Bitcoin dollar with uh, delta is uh, one hour length. So we would like to understand whether the return of Bitcoin dollar is affecting one hour later the return of uh, uh, Bitcoin Tether. Uh, I don't want to, uh, the analysis is a little bit complex. Okay, so here, let me interpret a little bit of what we have. But uh, uh, when you have a star, it means that the significance uh, is smaller than 1%. If we have a, when there is a, a, a row, an arrow, it means that uh, the P value, an arrow means that uh, the P value is below 5%. So there is a, a significant relation. When there is a star, it means that the significant relation is at 1%. Uh, uh, you have also, I have uh, reported here also the sign of a relationship, okay? And uh, what you observe is that uh, more or less, uh, there is no clear relationship, lead like relationship. There is no market that drives the arrow. You see that uh, in many cases, there is a uh, arrow going both directions. So for example, ether dollar affect uh, ether dollar and vice versa. Ether dollar affect Bitcoin dollar and vice versa. We are not able to define a direction. Uh, what we observe is that uh, in most of the cases, the relationship on the first set of market are positive. So if a market goes up, the other goes up and so on. Uh, differently, and uh, you see that there is a significance uh, which is very high. Uh, in most of the cases, significance is at one percent uh, in the first set of market. For the second set related to Bitcoin and uh, Ether and Tether, you see while in the first set of market, you see again a strong interaction because in most of the cases you have significance at one percent, but this time the sign, most of the case is negative. Okay, also that positive one in reality, if you go at a higher, lower frequency becomes negative. So this shows somehow uh, the, 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 the interpretation that we have is that uh, uh, in the first market, and uh, I will provide you for the evidence. In the first market, there is a strong, yeah. The first one, yeah, uh, it's difficult to have uh, among <laughs> different uh, variables. All negative correlation. No, minus I one times minus one is equal to no, no. I, I agree. Here you see that uh, we. I, I mean, it's uh, lead line, so it is yeah, 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 it's possible. I'm not saying it's possible. it is. Uh, it is uh, postponed by one hour. But uh, I come. Uh, I I provide you a, a a comment. I mean, here I had to tell you that uh, we find this. Hmm, there is one point that uh, this is maybe is uh, our, the weakness of our results. Here we take one regression by each other, by we regress uh, Bitcoin tether over Bitcoin dollar, and then we do enter, uh, and then we do the reverse. So you don't test uh, one against each other. It is one single regression. Now, uh, what, what, what do we have about this? Um, first of all, the separation among the markets is completely. You see that the connection among the others is uh, weak. There is no connection among the first set of market and the second one at 1%. So this is already a result. Uh, what do we think about uh, the, 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 our claim is that the one center that exchange with dollar is still interconnected with similar market movements, mostly from adding effect. So people, Go to the from uh, go from outside the crypto domain, go to the crypto domain, buy ether dollar or Bitcoin dollar. Instead, the crypto asset market with uh, Bitcoin ether and tether is more complex, and um, I will uh, uh, I will uh, I will uh, 
uh, the, our claim is uh, the negative negative relationship you see here there is a negative relationship plus well our hypothesis is that the negative relationship between bitcoin and tether and the ether and tether is due to some kinds of uh, uh, i would say arbitrage opportunities so you go from one market to the other one and they move in different directions so you move from tether from a, from a, a bitcoin to ether and so the price uh, going opposite direction. This is our claim, okay? This is substitution circle, we call it, uh, among two cryptocurrency and the stable coin. And uh, so there is some kinds of interaction, strong interaction. So people pass from Bitcoin to Ether, depending on the fact that we think that uh, from a technological point of view is better or there are opportunity, arbitrage opportunity, whatever. I have to say that uh, on this, uh, we don't have uh, a strong claim, okay? But again, we have seen a separation, okay? The first type of market, uh, Bitcoin uh, cryptocurrency with a dollar, and the second domain of markets are st st strictly separated, interconnected in a different way with different features. About market efficiency, which is our third point, and uh, and uh, uh, maybe I think this is the most, uh, not uh, the most significant contribution, I would say. But uh, we try to replicate the analysis that have been done about the stock exchange, considering regressive return at different frequencies, over legged return, over the laggard of the flow, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, we, here we are considering the, the flow. We are considering the effect of uh, return and order flow, how we interact with each other. The first thing that we do was about uh, the analysis of the order flow. So the order flow, just to go back, I go back to the point, is uh, a very important piece of information that you can use in financial market because it gives you the price pressure. If it is positive, it means that uh, people there, is, there are trades and trades are initiated by buyers. So are buyers who want to buy, okay? If it is negative, it happens very, very well. So the first thing that we try to do is a preliminary analysis to, to understand what is the structure of the order flow, to understand how if I find a positive volume, which is positive, if, uh, if I find it, uh, at some point here, if it is positive, what is the relationship with the order flow five minutes before, one minute before? Is it positive? Is it negative? It is affected by the term, whatever. Now, uh, so this is the first analysis which show these are the features. Sorry, it's, uh, it's uh, not readable, but uh, we have. Uh, uh, one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, one day, and we regress the order flow over the order flows one, uh, one minute, five minutes before the first row here. Then we regress it with respect to past return and when we mix together. So I regress the order flow in the last five minutes over the order flow five minutes before and the return that I had uh, during this period. So uh, what we observe, I mean, this is interesting because uh, in the stock exchange literature, it is observed by Chordia at all. Many, there are many papers, data papers. I have to say that uh, there are not so many recent papers, but uh, they show that the order flow is a uh, significant serial correlation, as we already said. Uh, but uh, uh, they also observe that faster can affect the behavior. That is in the short term, inside the day, there is a trend following component. So the order flow is positive here if fast return is positive because people follow uh, and go to the market. But over longer, over at shorter, lower frequency, so over the day, the, the effect is the contrary. So over the day, there are contrarian traders, and the, the order flow is positive when the return is negative one day before, more or less. Okay, so they, they show that there is the interplay of trend follower at very high frequency data 
and the contrarian strategy at one day. They think that over one day, arbitrage well, people who knows what to do exploit this and enter the market. So what we observe, we observe that curiously enough, seller correlation for the order flow is positive for all the markets, but it is limited and weakly statistically significant or no significantly for Bitcoin dollar and ether dollar. So you can see here, I had to, that if you look at uh, Bitcoin dollar, here you see that the P value of the order flow is not statistically significant at one day. And it's weakly statistically significant for Ether dollar and so on, while it is statistically significant for the other markets. So this is the first uh, result that we obtain. Okay. Again, there is a separation, okay? There are markets where dominated by dollar against cryptocurrency where there's little serial correlation and the other there is strong serial correlation. And uh, I, I don't go through the data, but uh, the table, but the table is uh, explained significantly this result. The other point, if you in, introduce return, uh, the interesting thing is that uh, the story that we observe in the stock exchange is not confirmed. Uh, what we observe is that, uh, uh, okay, let's do away paper against dollar. Paper against dollar is not really money. Okay. So I threw it away because it is dominated by parity. If you look at Bitcoin dollar and Ether dollar, we end up and uh, with positive coefficient for past return. Then, so there is trend following at very high frequency data, but then over the day to the moon. So there is no relationship with return. Instead, when markets are crypto assets are exchanged. With each other, you with each other you find positive coefficient of past return at high frequency, and then the coefficient becomes negative. So exactly what we observed for the stock exchange. So the idea is that uh, Bitcoin dollar and Ether dollar is dominated by trend following the short term at frequency which is very high, not a day. It is a, it is a it will observe it at five minutes, ten minutes, and so on. Why in markets where you trade? Bitcoin Ether with Tether or Ether against Bitcoin, they behaves like a stock exchange market. That is where our trend follower and when arbitrage enter and close the gap. Uh, so this again, this show again that uh, we are talking about different markets. People with information, I mean, we cannot talk about the information in these markets, guys. There is no information about uh, stable coin. Tether, of course, is, a, is well known, is value one, you know. But uh, Ether, Bitcoin, there is no way to think about uh, information. Well, we can think that uh, there are liquidity shock. Okay, so traders have liquidity shock. Or either that uh, people, it is not so convincing, maybe the argument, but people may have some change in their mind opinion about the technology of uh, blockchain or the use of. Uh, um, uh, Bitcoin and Ether, and they want to trade, but we trade in these markets against Ether, not or against Ether, but not against uh, the dollar. Uh, I go quickly to this. Uh, uh, further evidence that the markets behave in this way, if you regress the return on the order flow, what you observe is that there is an effect. Uh, there is an effect only again in the markets where you have a Bitcoin, a Bitcoin exchange with a, a Tether and Tether exchange Bitcoin. Why? Why? Uh, well, I have to say that uh, here it depends on uh, what you consider. But for example, if you consider one day, one day you find that uh, regressing the return of uh, Bitcoin dollar all over the order flow, you find the non statistical significant coefficient. While if you regress Bitcoin over Tether, you find the statistical significant coefficient at one hour out one day. Uh, if you go to one hour, they are statistical significant in all the markets. So here you have a one minute. So 
The difference is that at one at one day, there's a strong effect on market or the flow of market we have with also no linear effect. So uh, in markets where people are exchanged exchange with dollar, where the flow doesn't seem to contain relevant information again. So if you observe that a lot of people initiated a trade in the Bitcoin dollar, you don't think that this contain information. So you follow it and return goes up. Uh, now, last point. And uh, so we have more or less shown the quality, the regularities that you observe in the stock exchange markets are observed on uh, crypto market exchange each other, but not in crypto market exchange with the dollar. The interpretation that we have is that uh, the real markets that were where there is price discovery is provided by cryptocurrency against each other and not against the dollar. Against the dollar is a, usually, is mostly a hard effect, a demand effect or supply effect. Uh, the last point that we wanted to invest in is a market coefficient, okay? So here, the point is to look at uh, the regression that looks like this, log return, over log return plus return. So here log return at one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, one hour, one day. First of all, against the log return, one minute before, five minutes before and so on. And then we add the order flow and when we put everything together. What we observe is that over one minute, so very, very high frequency. One minute, I know that for you to imagine it's not high frequency, but not it by two, okay. The effect is negative, okay? In most of the cases, and it is statistically significant. Why? Because there is a liquidity process. It goes up and then goes down. If you go to a lower frequency, what we observe is that uh, the effect is, uh, it becomes uh, positive on the lower frequency for markets against the dollar. So we are here positive like this, these values that you observe here, and it is statistically significant. And so main result that I, I, I want to be clear about it, markets are not efficient. So if you look at the uh, so-called random, want to test the random work hypothesis that log return today does not predict log return tomorrow, be sure that here we are not in favor of it. Okay, we are not efficient, these markets. But uh, what we observe is that uh, uh, what we observe is that uh, uh, the sign of the coefficient show that uh, there are either trend follower or arbitrary errors. And the evidence is that the first couple of markets is inefficient. So the markets that we trade for dollars is inefficient for the presence of trend followers during the day. Instead, the second set of market is characterized by contrarian traders always during the day. And this is seen by looking at the coefficient, which is different here. Here is positive over the day, as you can see here. And instead here it is negative. So again, we have that uh, this second set of markets uh, is more, I would say, mature in terms of uh, price information, behavior, and so on. Like it, yes. Last point, and then uh, we, we stopped. We, this was, uh, I have to say, when we started this research, we said, we want to analyze this. And uh, we were not able to derive very significant results. And maybe uh, there, there is a, the motivation of our paper started from a paper by Makarov and Shoah, Journal of Finance, where they, analyzed the arbitrage opportunity in Bitcoin dollar. And they discovered that there are very few arbitrage opportunities. So the opportunity to trade tick by tick, uh, one second, anyway, level. If you trade through exchange, you don't find a good opportunity, but you can find a lot of money by trading Bitcoin in different, in different um, fiat months, in, di in different countries. So you, you trade the Bitcoin against dollar, and then you trade Bitcoin against the euro. You can, in that case, there are arbitrage. But if you trade the Bitcoin against dollar in different exchange, 
there are very few opportunities. And uh, this is a this was my starting point. And uh, how we compute this? We take uh, uh, for each one second time interval, we proceed as follows: we compute the best bid and the best price. Ask sorry, and then we compute the volume that you can get. If the bid is higher than the ask, there is an ask, and we apply it for the volume that is available in the market. <coughs> and uh, this can be an estimate of the profits that you get. Okay. What we obtain, and at this end of my story, is that um, unless uh, uh, we, I mean, I discussed with Tommaso, and maybe you, I hope that uh, we find that uh, in all the period that you can make uh, very little money. There are, but uh, it is interesting the following thing, which is uh, not so obvious. This, these are the number of exchange. So you can see that. Uh, we have seven exchange of Bitcoin against dollar against Tether, six of Ether against Tether, 15 of Ether against Bitcoin, 10 exchange for Bitcoin against dollar exchange. Now, uh, the two side set of markets behave differently with respect to two features. First of all, the amount of uh, minutes where we observe an, an arbitrage opportunity. We call it off pair. Okay, and the other uh, important point in column is the spread. So this shows to you the percentage, the fraction of minutes where we discover a positive spread. This is the average spread in case there is a, an opportunity to do average. So the interesting thing is that uh, more or less look at uh, the quality Bitcoin dollar provides uh, when there is an opportunity, a huge spread. So on average is $26 on tax. But uh, there are very few, few minutes where you can check 2.04. So it means only 2% of the minutes you can do it. Considering Bitcoin Tether and Data Tether, it happens very reverse. The fraction of minutes where you can have a trade you can have an opportunity is quite high, 20%, one fee. But the spread is quite small. Now, the arbitrage is the amount of money that you can get from doing this. Because let's see if uh, I'm correct. It represents the total profits in USD generated by trading exploiting arbitrage opportunity. So, to make a good point, if you were able to apply all the uh, mean all the arbitrage opportunity you get uh, six million dollars in a bitcoin tether 2.28 uh, dollars in a ether tether and uh if you if you deal with the bitcoin dollar and ether dollar it will be quite similar amount very little arbitrage opportunity with tether tether is a tether dollar is a, is not a market the point is, uh, I had a discussion with uh, the, the, the student of Tommaso who gave you the, the presentation two, weeks, two days ago. The problem is that uh, if you introduce a uh, fee that you may have a uh, charge in this, he said to me that if you trade a lot, you almost have no, no fee. We consider we don't have, we cannot have an estimate. So you consider the fee that you trade have the markets refer to uh, considering uh, a standard fee, okay? Well, if you consider standard fee, Bitcoin Tether and Ether Tether don't generate enough profits, you get some arbitrage opportunity on Bitcoin dollar and uh, Ether dollar, which is not a, a very, we are talking about one year and a half, we are talking about uh, less than uh, half million dollars, okay? 60, Six hundred sixty-five million thousand dollars. So, it depends what you think. I mean, are you able to implement uh, this or this? I would say maybe you will be in the middle. Okay. So, takeaway three: markets where dollar cryptocurrency are exchanged with dollar are less efficient, and there are, in any case, more arbitrage opportunities in terms of. Uh, 
spread that, that you can get. So conclusion, and uh, I'm at the end of, uh, of the length of the seminar. We cannot compare orange with that. Very, it's a very simple way to simply to synthesize. Uh, I would say that uh, if you want to get, I mean, all the attention is devoted to Bitcoin dollar. And I would say that this attention is, uh, is not very well posed, if you want. I mean, the mark is that you should look at. There is a Bitcoin Ether, if you don't want to understand what, what is the behavior of the two technologies, or Bitcoin Tether. And uh, these are the markets where real players operate, are less volatile, are more efficient, less arbitrage opportunities, and are dominated not only by herding, so people who follow the flock, so go to the market, because they, I mean, I don't remember six months ago, uh, if they were known. Um, Musk said that he would like to accept uh, Bitcoin for, for buying tes Tesla and then the price went up. Okay. So uh, it, is a, it is a different domain. And uh, I would say that, uh, and this is interesting. And uh, this, I think, is the main point that I would like to make. Markets populated by the markets where cryptocurrency are exchanged are more serious market than we may <clears throat> And this, I think, is uh, the main message that I would like to deliver to you. It's made up by professionals who operate so with, uh, with, uh, with the strategies, have the views, maybe uh, wrong or correct, I don't know, but they operate uh, to do business, to do trading with as me, more or less more or less like in a stock exchange market. The markets with dollar is something different. There is a place where, I mean, many of you maybe have been invested, but uh, pay attention because of lot, large volatility, large noise, and uh, not a real, a real market. So that's the end of my story. Thank you.